Hi guys, welcome to this session on LibreOffice Calc. In this module, I want to show you how you can create an automatic chart, a chart that will change as the data changes without you actually needing to repoint the chart itself. So on the screen, I've got an example of what I'm talking about. So here's the chart, and you can see I've got it picking up these four dates, which is basically coming off this list. And I'm using the offset function to get this list here, these four um, dates and four figures. If I add some extra dates and data, for example, so if I just highlight that information and then just pull it down, what I've got there is I've got some negatives going on there. So I'll just get rid of those negatives. You don't want no negatives. You can see it's picking up the last four dates. So we've got the 4th, the 5th, the 6th and the 7th of April. So you can see that there from that list. So every time I add something in this list, I'll just highlight these two again. You'll see how that works. It's always going to pick up the last four dates and the last four numbers or figures in this list. And it's the offset function that is doing that. Now, if I just delete some of this and get rid of this graph delete that and let's just delete these figures so you can let's just do it again so first of all the function we need to use is the offset function with the count a function now the count a function will count how many items there are in a list so for example if i use the count a function equals count a and then just select this list it will tell me how many items there are in that list well it will if it's not formatted to date so I'll just change that to money or whatever so the six items I'll put it to um, general formatting it'll just say six so six items in that list so I'll just do that over here you see equals count a and then if I highlight the whole column and then tick that, there are seven items or seven cells in that column that's got to that have data. If I put something down there, that goes to eight. So it's counting anything, even if it's text, in this column. So we'll just get rid of these three. That's what the count a function does. That's it there, counting the whole column. The colon means the whole column. So if I get rid of that. Now the offset function, so if I just use the offset function equals offset, you need to give it a reference. So offset that cell by one row, comma, no columns, close. It comes back with 4446. Now that is picking that up because that is a date. If I change that back to a date it's picking up the 26th now if I change that figure one to a two or a three even let's go for three 28th so three cells offset from the top one one two three it's picking up that date so that's the two functions we're going to use so if I just control Z that get rid of that color and let's just type it in and join it together. So equals offset, first of all, offset cell A1. I'm gonna pull that down as well. So I'm just gonna F4 that to dollar sign that, comma. So the rows need to be um, whatever the count A function brings back, and then I can minus it one, two, three, or whatever I wanna do. So let's just do count A, and I will count the whole column. Close the bracket. And then that's the that's now the rows part of the offset function. If I do minus three on that one, let's go for minus three, comma zero for the columns, and then the close the bracket. Let's see what comes back on this one. So that's coming back with the 29th, minus 3, so 30, 30, 29th. So if I change that to 
minus 2 that comes back with a 30 of 1 2 so that's okay so I want this one to be let's go for the last three in this example so if I go for three and if I tick that one and then if I pull this down just and then just change this to minus two tick that one and then that one to minus one and then tick that one so I've got the last three days there now so it's always going to be the last three days in this list now this one I'll do it all again it's going to be equals off set open the bracket this time it's going to be B1 we're going to use so B1 again I'm going to dollar sign that comma now I'm doing the count A function count A I'll highlight the whole column close the bracket minus 3 to start off with comma 0 close the bracket so the 0 is the number of columns offset that's coming back with 2 3 4 2 3 4 is the 29th now if I pull that down I'll get the same but that needs to go to minus 2 minus 2 tick that one that one needs to go to minus 1 minus one tick that one so I've got the same figures there like so now what I need to do is just highlight this information click on insert chart That's, that'll do I'll just finish that one off I'm not interested in going through all of the graph wizard now to check that this works what you do need to do is or you could probably just sit this this graph on top of that you don't need to see that data if you don't want you can just sit it like that and you can also sometimes put that data in a in a chart range itself but if I highlight these last four cells so at the moment we're on the 29 30th 31st so if I pull these down and get rid get some positive figures in there you can see that it's gone the first, the second, the third. So it always will be the last three in this list. So as soon as I put something in there, that then just picks it up. So fourth, third, second. So it's the offset function with the count A function that allows you to create a dynamic chart that automatically updates. So that's it. That's the formula there. Offset, make sure you dollar sign the, the first cell. And then the count A function counts how many items are in that column. And then you've got whatever number you, you might want the 12 month one. So that might be 12 or a six month one, six. It's up to you how you, how you want to display the information. But it will always show you, in this case, the last three months. In any, and I've got other ones where it's last 13 months. And I'm comparing that one month with the new month. So I've got one that shows the last 30 months, but it's up to you whatever date range you want. But that's how you create a dynamic chart using the offset function and count. So hopefully that was of use to you. Thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.